Howdy folks, Sapper here, aka Sean, and we're bringing you Labyrinth the Awakening, turn number 14. So I forgot to mention in 13 that uh, we're probably about, well, we're probably about halfway through the game. So um, the first deck was about 8 turns, so I'm assuming it's going to be about 8 turns per deck, so about 24, 24 turns, you know, depending on where the troop level is and the jihadist funding is, it's going to vary a little bit, right? Because, uh, like, the jihadist funding is at uh, tight right now, so they're only drawing seven cards as opposed to nine cards. And right now the U.S. is drawing nine cards. So we're drawing 16 cards a, a hand. It could be a max of 18 cards, right, if you add the nine that the U.S. could get and the nine that the jihadist could possibly get, and it could drop down to 14 cards. So... I mean, you guys get the point. It's going to be about it's about 24 turns-ish. So we're about at the halfway point. Um, I want to say that the... So the the War on Terror turns, the time is abstracted, but you could figure it was about a year per turn because that was a, a nine-year stretch. Uh, the Awakening goes from 2010 to 2014, so that's four years. So you figure the turns are probably representative of about six months each so anyway I, I started getting the the forever war cards ready because we've got I think there's there's one turn guaranteed of these and then the the next turn after that so turn 15 will be completely these and then turn 16 will start drawing from the forever war cards um so at the end of the, during the, the maintenance, you know, the end of the turn phase, um, jihadist funding is as low as it can get. Yes. Prestige is still as low as it can get. Boo. Um, Libya, I think they were at neutral and they went to ally. So you move towards the, if you have three, if the difference between a, um, Awakening and reaction markers is plus three, so the there is a difference, right? So it's plus three, so you move your marker. Once it gets to the edge, then the next time, the next turn, it'll flip to good. And the same is true for Islamists. So if it was minus, or if it was three reaction to zero awakening, then this would go the opposite direction. Then when it gets over here, it'll keep flipping till it gets to Islamist rule. So that happened. That's how Syria became Islamist rule was because of convergence but Libya is going to at the end of this turn they're going to be good so right now it stands I think I've added this up right so fair good is seven poor Islamist is seven so I think things are starting to go in the right direction resources controlled by um, both parties is at three and let me see, is that it? I think that's probably about it. So my hand of cards, I don't, this is a lot of boo right here. Um, so I think this one I can get away with it not getting played. I don't, I didn't really look too hard at the other ones. If Iran has a cell, Iran does have a cell, so that could happen. Do any of the two following in Somalia or adjacent African countries? So yes, that can happen. Play if you can select two unmarked Muslim countries, non-Iran. Two unmarked Muslim countries. Turkey, Sudan, Algeria, Morocco, Mali. Yeah, so we can do that. We can we can also do that one too. So not not a big fan of a bunch of those. And then there's some good ones too that oh, this is gonna be great. Play in a country with a tan besieged regime marker where there are troops. And the militia outnumber cells, remove it, and change marker to make ally. That can happen right here in Somalia. So I'm excited about that. And then play if Syria tested. Play Syria into civil war. So that will be awesome because we'll remove the Islamist rule by throwing them into civil war. So I'm kind of excited about those two cards. And there's some other stuff in here, but... Don't get too excited too quick about what I have because the jihadis go first and they can always ruin the best laid plans.
So let's go ahead and see what uh, see what they do. Hopefully it's not bad. Well, I know I've played this one before. So there's multiples of some cards in the game, and I know I've seen this one before. Select see three countries without cells. Test them. Recruit once in each, ignoring funding. Well, place cadre in each country that does not receive a cell. Well, there's plenty of cells on the track, so I can um, definitely ignore. Um, I don't want to worry about the cadre thing. So let me go ahead and figure out what their priority is, and then we'll go ahead and do that. All right, so I had to look at look at our card here. So that's card 189. So th to figure out where the three go. So one of them's going to the U.S., then we use recruit and travel priorities. So um, not Islamist rule, Pakistan. Besiege regime. Oh, looks like Somalia. So the U.S. is without cell. Somalia is without cell. So that definitely happens. And then oh, Syria doesn't matter. Right? Where what? Where 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 what? Where was I? U.S. Poor than fair than good. So the U.S. is definitely getting one. One, two, let me pull these off the track here. So the U.S. gets one. Somalia gets one. And poor than fair than good. Saudi Arabia? Because that's got high resources, so you would definitely want to do that. Iraq? I think what we'll do, well, poor than fair than good. So let's do, we'll do Saudi Arabia because three resources, poor. So, all right. So now we have to roll to find out which ones actually stay. So U.S., we have to roll a one. Nope. So you go back to the track. Um... Somalia, we have to roll. Oh, you get a automatic success because you're a besieged regime. So guess what? You go there to Somalia. And then what was the other one? Saudi Arabia. So we got to roll better than a th lower than a three. Okay, so there we go. All right, well, we didn't get one in the U.S., which is good. I definitely did not want that happening. Card number two. All right, Taliban resurgent. Play if able to remove three cells in a civil war or regime change country, remove three cells. Okay, we cannot do that. Place any two available plots and make two jihad rolls there. Ignore failures or shifts to Islamist rule. Let me see what we do if we can't do that. All right, we can't do this. We can't do this, but we can. The flowchart still says I'm going to do plots, so plots are still going to happen. Um, plots priority is with troops, so we have right there and there. Most active cells. Well, we can do, so we can do a plot here and a plot here. And then where would we go? And then it looks like Iran. Yeah, so we'll do one in Somalia, one in Saudi, one in Iran. All right, let's see what happens. You get activated three or lower. Okay, thankfully nothing happens. Saudi Arabia. Oh, this cadre marker is gone because now the, now we have actual cell there. So three or lower. So we do get a plot in Saudi Arabia. 
And now I have to pay attention to plots because there are WMDs in the mix. And then where was the last one? What did I say the last one? I think it was, oh, it was the Philippines. So the Philippines need to roll a two or less. No. All right. So we have one plot out there. This guy goes active. The Philippines guy is already active anyway. All right. That's it for um, the jihadis. We have a plot to get rid of. Who do I who do I use to do that with? I think I can do that because no, actually I will do that. Yeah, that that'll happen. I don't like that. I can do that because they cannot get cells. So I can use this to get rid of the op. So I'll do that. Let's see what it was. All right. Wasn't the wasn't the WMD that I was hoping it was going to be. So I just looked, and I didn't do this, but I just noticed. So alert, block, remove a plot. Any country with a plot, use three ops. Select and reveal. If a WMD, remove from the game. If not. So I'm going to remove one of the WMDs because I uncovered it. Well, that's good. That, that's kind of comforting to know that I can. There is hope of actually getting rid of them. Iran has a cell. I don't want to play that. I don't want to give them that. That's two cards that they have that I can do any two of the following in Somalia. I'm going to hold off on that. I think I can play that for now, but I want to... I want to do that. I want to do the status quo. So plan a country with a tan regime change marker where troops plus militia outnumber cells at least two to one. So it is four to one. Oh, you can't see it. It's four to one. So I definitely have that. Remove the regime change marker and make ally. All other markers and pieces remain. So remove regime change. Gone. And make ally. Well, Somalia was already an ally, but I don't know. Let me th let me think about this. Was maybe was that the best thing to do? Let me see if if they become how to remove a besieged regime ally or besieged regime marker. Otherwise, all right. So the the way to remove that besieged regime marker is to get it to um, good. So it would take two steps. Would I be better off just rolling on the war of ideas? Mm. You know what? I didn't even have to roll there. When I did the uh, to place cells, because you had two things. So, well, I mean, it's there anyway. I don't know. Yeah, I'll let it stand. There might have been a better use for that, but and what was this one? I think we're going to do this. Play Syria into civil war. All right, so we are going to place Syria into a civil war. I don't know when those training camps disappear. All right, when a civil war is triggered, test if marked. No. If good governance, make fair. If, is, if Islamist rule, make poor. Poor. 
Do not adjust alignment. Place a Civil War marker. Replace all Awakening markers with an equal number of blue cylinders. There are no Awakening markers there. Replace all Reaction markers with an equal number of Sleeper cells. No. Remove Regime Change marker. No. Any pre-existing cells, cadres, troops, blah, blah, blah. Aid, plot, they all remain. So... Now we'll place either two militia or two cells there and then one of the other types. So we'll put two militia and a cell. Place one aid marker in Turkey. So now we have to test Turkey because a marker went there. And that is it. And then we remove this card from the game. So let's see where Turkey falls. We are going to four poor, poor neutral. So there we go. That was that. And that is the US's car phase done. Ghost soldiers, remove half of all militia in any one civil war or regime country. Well, looks like that's happening here in Syria. So those two that I just put there are now removed. Unreliable combat troops. That, that, that makes a lot of sense. I was in Iraq for a year and I saw plenty of unreliable troops. All right. Abu Saif, ISIL, oil and gas kingpin, and ISIL CFO. All right, here we go. All right, this, this value goes to the reserves, but we do this. Plus two funding. Ha uh ha, -huh, you're still at tight. Plus three if caliphate capital on the map. Caliphate is not on the map. So, all right. I believe a caliphate can happen if you place three cells in one spot. Let me look because I did place three cells last turn, but I did not place them in the same spot. All right, so here we go. The Jihadist player may declare a caliphate any time an event played by either player places three or more cells into a civil war, regime change, or Islamist country. So that did not happen. All right, that was both of the Jihadists turn Let's do that hmm. I don't think I want to do well the only place I'd want to do a civil war right now would be Afghanistan that might be good Playing a civil war country, if one side has more cells or more less than the other, remove the difference so that both sides are equal. Well, that would be right there. Do I want to do that? Do I want to spend two ops just to do that? What is this one? Play in fair two or th three resource country. Fair two or three resource country. Egypt. Shift alignment one box towards ally. Ooh, that might be good. That might be just what I need. Uh, I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to play this. This is a good... I remember I complained last turn about that... Um, it was a jihadist card that was one op that was crazy ridiculous. But this kind of evens it out, I think. So if you play in a fair two or three years country, place one awakening marker or shift alignment one box towards ally. Ooh, what do I want to do? I think I'm going to put the awakening marker there. Because that gives me a difference of two, and a difference of two means I get to add one more. 
So at the end of the turn, I'll, I'll get to add one more. And eventually, what's happening in Libya will happen in Egypt. Special. After playing, place this card face down in the appropriate in the approximate middle of the draw pile. Hmm. Interesting. All right. So we have put you back into the game. So that card sounds like it never goes away. So that was my first card. Ah, that's terrible. They don't need to get a hold of those cards. That's not an option. I think I'm going to do that. It'll put the... Yeah, I don't really want to do that. What is this one? Do two of the following in Somalia or adjacent African countries. Place a reaction marker. Place a cell. If it can't place a cell, place a level one or two plot. Place a besiege regime marker. Select, reveal, and draw pirates, Boko Haram, or Islamic Maghreb from, dis from discard pile. <sighs> Boy, that's a lot. Now, this is what I understand. Well, so I would put, I would draw one of those cards and put it back into my hand. I think Boko Haram, I was able to, to use that and it didn't hurt me. No, not there. That would kind of backfire in your face. I don't know how that works. How does that work? Was it that far down? Did I miss it? Maybe I'm just blind. All right, um, I have to take a break for a minute, and I kind of lost where I was at. I think <laughs> I think it's the jihadis phase, because I'm looking. The, jihadi ha jih bleh, the jihadis have three cards, and I have five. So it's a difference of two, which is what we started out with. I drew nine, they drew seven, so I'm thinking it's their turn. Place up the two level one plots in Israel, minus one funding. Okay, so we can do that. Let's just double check and see. It's card number 177. If I draw random plots or I actually, if no plot one. Okay, so I can do that. So I will I actually have to search through here. So we've got... All right. Two level one plots in Israel. And then minus one funding. I'm assuming I don't have to roll to see if they're successful because it just says place them there. And then they're not going to do that. Can we do a major jihad? No. Funding tight? Yes. Cells available? No. Plot. So we're going to do three plots. Holy crap. This is going to be terrible. That's a lot of plots. This is not going to be good. We can't do it. No U.S. with troops unless the prestige is one. Okay. 
Pakistan, no. Philippines, no. If would prestige go down by one? Prestige won't go down by one in the Philippines. Actually, no. I, yeah, I don't do that. Most active cells. Syria. Unless no arsenal. Iran. Most active cells. So... So, an unblocked plot gives you funding, and we can worsen governance. Um, well, the governance, it's basically the only thing I can do with these plots. I mean, Iran would be a good spot. Does Iran fall on this flow chart anywhere? So what we'll do is we'll put one in Iran because we can worsen the governance there. And then... It honestly doesn't matter because we'll put them all in Iran. Maybe. One, two, and three. Because we want to worsen the governance. Basically, that's what we're we're trying to accomplish there. Um, now let's see if they if they stick. So, got to roll. I don't think. Let me double check. I don't think the um, reaction tokens affect plots. All right, so they don't affect plots. So basically, I need to roll less than a two. So one plot succeeds. So I have three. Whew, three plots. Man, that's crazy. This, I've been, I don't know what to do, right? So the event plays, but it wouldn't go to, I don't, I'm going to play this as it, it doesn't play for the, the jihadis. Because then that card would go to my hand, and I mean... I don't know. This one this one I'm confused on. So I'm going to pretend that this one can't be played. So I'll use this one to block the plot in Iran. I don't think I have another three. See, I can't even... Both of those are going to happen in Israel. I think I'll play this one. I'll risk it to try to improve the governance. No, that's not going to work because you're minus three. That's. Mm. Guess what? These guys are going to be in Islamist rule next turn, and I don't think there's a thing I can do about it.
No, it's not going to work. I can't do that. All right, so I'm going to try to do this, hopefully. Oh, actually, I'm going to use the... I think I'll just put these in the reserves. We'll do this. Hopefully, we'll get to remove the cell. Nope. All right, this was going to go in there anyway. It was only a matter of time. And it is the jihadi's turn. Let's resolve these plots. Since I couldn't get rid of... How many are there? There's the two. Two plot ones. Non-Muslim. Add plots number to the funding. So we're going to get two to the funding. Roll posture. Um, we don't roll the posture for Israel. It doesn't ever change. So that's it. Mm, I think it's their turn now. So they've got the one card. Minus one prestige, place one reaction marker in a Shia mix. Shia mix is green. Iran no longer an oil exporter. So isn't that where you flip this? I think you flip this. I think you might flip that. Hold on. No, it doesn't get flipped, but there's a marker for trade embargo. Minus one prestige, done. Minus one reaction marker, or one reaction marker in a Shia mix. Well, we want to place that where it's going to have the most. It's not going to do anything here. All right, let's put this here in Saudi Arabia. So we've got no longer an oil exporter, so that's it for the jihadis. Uh, my card count's messed up. I skipped something, some turn somewhere. Don't know where it was, but... Um, all right, we can place a cell, place a cell in Somalia. What else can I do? Place a level one or two plot, place a besieged regime. Let's do the reaction marker. Done. I get two ops. Um, I have two in the reserves, so I probably will do... Let's see if I can... Let's see if we can do a war of ideas in Egypt and change that to good. So that'll cost two. Um... We're trying to change that to good. So we have minus one for war of ideas, minus one to change to good, minus two. So that's a minus four. They all equal out. So it's just a straight roll in Egypt. We're trying to change you to good. And that failed. I needed a four. Why couldn't it have been a four? I don't know. So my second card play... I am going to, let's see if we can change, change to fair. So I will use two and I will use one from there. Um, it will be a minus one to the die roll. F 
four, so that's a three. So again, I needed a five, so not a surprise. So now it is my turn one more time. I get one more chance at doing something. Let's try. Nope, I can't do it there. Let's try Egypt. I thought that was a, well, that's a zero sum, right? So we need a roll low die, roll low. It did. Yep. I like it when you get, when that happens, when you get uh, all those turns and absolutely Zippo happens. So anyway, that is the end of turn 14. And so what we'll do here, so this is kind of, all right, minus one funding, minus one prestige, I'm already at one, doesn't matter. Plus one prestige for that, that's not the case because that would have to be there. Reserves go to zero for everybody, even though the game says the reserves good reset for the jihadis, I'm not playing that. Return plots, they all went polarization attrition. All right, so here in Libya, Three plus markers move alignment one box toward the player's side. So it's already there. If already at the edge, change the governance level. So we're going to good. Boom. Done. All right. Implement 115, I think. Or 11.1.5. What happens is I believe we put a random awakening marker somewhere. All right, so we'll remove. Remove one. I also think Yeah, we we placed that marker in a random country. Because the the good vibes are spreading across the globe, right? That's kind of what that represents. Um So four, they go to, it goes to Egypt. So there's five there now. All right, I don't know exactly how that works, but the difference here is plus three. So we will go over here and then you will lose a marker, if I'm not mistaken. No, governance did not change. So we'll keep that there. So when governance changes, that will do that. So um, we'll move over because of all that. It's a plus three difference. I don't think that affects anything else. Oh, hold on. There we go. So that goes to poor. And I think that's the only place that's going to happen. Actually, we lose a marker. And that's it. So let me see here. We got some more good resources. So that's to four. So we have one, four. I think so. Islamist has one. Islamist only has one now. Because we did the Civil War there. Fair, good countries. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, poor Islamist countries. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Is that right? One, that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
nine. Boy, I was off on that, wasn't I? Some of these over here on the side kind of get forgotten about. Central Asia gets forgotten about. So, all right, so we're done with polarization. Deal new cards, remove lapsing events. There weren't any return off map troops. Regime changes to tan. So we just draw new cards and that's it. So, hey, that's turn 14. Thanks for watching, everybody.